Okay, so what we're going to start with here is going to be some of the uh, superficial muscles where we'll start our way proximally and work our way distally, and we will start superficial and work our way deep. So here we're looking at an equine thoracic limb, proximal hits here, cranials here, caudal back here, and distal would be traveling down the limb. We'll start with a few of the extrinsic muscles that we are still able to see. Namely, some of those being this little piece that's sticking out right here is going to be a piece of the serratus ventralis, specifically the thoracic part. We see this chunk of muscle right here, since it, we are looking at an equine specimen, is going to be the fused omotransversarius and the brachiocephalicus, specifically the clidobrachialis. If we look at this limb, this is the other side, still looking at the lateral aspect. We will also see the trapezius, specifically the thoracic part, attaching to that spinal tuber on the spine of the scapula. If we reflect these muscles, we are now looking still at the lateral aspect. We see this cranial most muscle here, which is going to be the subclavius muscle, very robust in the equine. Just caudal to that, we will see the supraspinatus muscle, the infraspinatus muscle, and overlying that is this kind of triangular shaped muscle right here, which is the deltoideus. Since we're looking at an equine and we don't have an acromion, theirs is just the deltoideus muscle. We'll talk about the bovine here in a little bit. As we continue to move around, the most caudal muscles we're going to see are going to be the triceps brachii muscles. We see the long head of the triceps brachii and the lateral head of the triceps brachii. Now we will go ahead and switch legs and look at some of the deeper muscles on the lateral aspect. Here again, just to orient, we have proximal and distal cranial and caudal. So here we're looking at the deltoideus muscle again, and if we reflect that caudally, we can see this other smaller triangular shaped muscle, just caudal to the infraspinatus. This small triangular shaped muscle is the teres minor muscle. So what we will do now will be to flip the leg and look at the medial aspect Let's get some things oriented here. Okay, so again, proximal, distal, cranial, caudal. So again, we'll start cranially and work our way around. We see here our subclavius muscle. And if we reflect that a little further cranially, we can see this cranial most muscle attaching to the scapula which is the supraspinatus. Again, you can see the supraspinatus from both the medial and lateral sides. The triangular shaped muscle right here is the subscapularis. And finally, we have our teres major muscle, which is best seen on the medial aspect. Here we see the remnants of the serratus ventralis muscle and the rhomboideus muscles. If we look down here, we can also see our latissimus dorsi, or a small piece of the latissimus dorsi. We can see our ascending or deep pectoral muscle, our transverse pectoral, and finally our descending pectoral. We can see that really well on this aspect. Again, so we're looking cranially at the thoracic limb. We see the descending pectoral transverse pectoral, and the ascending or deep pectoral, just ventral to the latissimus dorsi. Now we will look at some of the other medial muscles of the brachium. Here we see this kind of almost gracilis looking muscle that's on the medial aspect. This is the tensor fasciae antibrachii. And just deep to that muscle, we will see again the long head of the triceps brachii, 
and the medial head of the triceps brachii. In this orientation, we can also see this very shiny tendon right here, which is the coracobrachialis muscle, and this very large muscle here on the cranial aspect of the brachium, which is the biceps brachii muscle. Okay, we had to move to just a different specimen real quick, and we're gonna be looking for a very tiny muscle that's just caudal to the coracobrachialis muscle, and a lot of times deep to it, this tiny little muscle right here that's lying directly on the caudal aspect of the shoulder joint capsule is the articularis humeri muscle. The last muscle that we're gonna see, we're gonna have to flip back to the lateral aspect of the limb. And if we transect and lift up this lateral head of the triceps brachii, we can now see this separate muscle lying just deep to it, which is the anconius muscle. Now we will move a little further distally. Again, here we can see the triceps brachii muscle. We can also see this muscle running just lateral to it, which is the brachialis muscle. Between this biceps brachii muscle and this cranial most antibrachial muscle, which is the extensor carpi radialis, we have this connective tissue structure, this very thick piece of connective tissue, which is actually a continuation of the tendon of the biceps brachii, and that is our Lacertus fibrosus. That's gonna be part of that stay apparatus in the equine thoracic limb. As we move laterally and caudally, we again see the extensor carpi radialis, we see this muscle with a very long tendon going all the way down to the digit. That's the common digital extensor. We have this muscle that's very thin right here with its tendon. That's the lateral digital extensor. And finally, we have the, fle or the extensor carpi ulnaris. Now we're gonna flip over and we're looking now at the caudal most aspect of the antibrachium you will see this triangular shaped muscle with a very distinct tendon running down the caudal aspect. That is the humeral head of the deep digital flexor muscle. We'll come back to the deep digital flexor here in just a minute. Before we do that, we're gonna run through the flexor muscles on the medial aspect of the limb. We can see this cranial most flexor muscle being the flexor carpi radialis. The next muscle as we move caudally is the flexor carpi ulnaris, and it has two distinct heads. We have the humeral head, and we have the ulnar head of the flexor carpi ulnaris. And again, right next to it on the caudal aspect is the ulnar head of the deep digital flexor. If you transect and reflect the flexor carpi ulnaris, and the flexor carpi radialis. Now we can see some of the other deeper flexor muscles. And this muscle right here, just deep to the flexor carpi ulnaris, is the superficial digital flexor muscle. If you feel this or transect it, you will actually see it's kind of a triangular shaped muscle. So that's a good way to distinguish it. When we pull on that muscle, we see its tendon right here. So it is the superficial digital flexor muscle tendon that is most superficial within the metacarpal area. Just deep to that, we see this large chunk of muscle here, and that is actually all the humeral head of the deep digital flexor muscle. So we saw the ulnar head on the back of the antebrachium right here. We see the humeral head just deep to the superficial digital flexor. And then if we look way deep down in there, you see a tiny little muscle right on the bone. That is the radial head. I'll try to get a better shot here in a few minutes with a different specimen. So the only other muscle that should be really on your list would be the interosseous muscle, AKA the suspensory ligament. 
So now we're looking down into the metacarpal area. We have the tendon of the superficial digital flexor. We have the tendon of the deep digital flexor along with that distal check ligament right there. And just deep to that, we have the interosseous muscle, AKA suspensory ligament. So again, I mentioned this is the distal check ligament, which is attaching to the deep digital flexor. We will also have a proximal check ligament, which isn't quite dissected out here. Again, I'll try to find another one of those. Okay, so here we've already gone over the muscles in the equine thoracic limb, so we're just gonna transition and do some of the unique looking ones in, or unique ones period, in a bovine. So to start off with, just to orient, we have our cranial aspect and our caudal aspect. We have our supraspinatus muscle here and our infraspinatus muscle here. Now we can see that in the bovine, the, the uh, deltoideus muscle is split into two separate and distinct parts. We have this cranial most part, which is the acromial part attaching to the acromion. And we have this more caudal aspect, which would be the scapular part. Deep underneath here, under that fat under there, is where the teres minor would be. We already saw that in the equine. Next, we're gonna to move to the caudal aspect of this leg, and we're gonna look at a unique um, head to the triceps. So again, we see the long head of the triceps here. We see the lateral head of the triceps here. In bovine, they also have, just deep to the lateral head of the triceps, they have an accessory head of the triceps here. And then just deep to that accessory head, again, we see the anconius muscle. So a lot of times it's difficult to separate these three muscles from each other without damaging them to a certain extent. But again, we have the lateral head and accessory heads of the triceps brachii, and we have the anconius muscle. A couple other things to note here would be the common digital, or is that the common digital extensor now has two tendons coming from it because we have two toes. The other muscle that I did not mention in the equine is gonna be this very large muscle that starts laterally. And it's tendon, very nice shiny tendon, goes from lateral over towards the medial aspect of the carpus. That is the abductor pollicis longus or extensor carpi obliquus. You can use either one of those and you'd be correct. What we'll do is we'll flip this bovine limb over and we'll be looking now at the medial aspect. Another muscle that looks quite a bit different between bovine and equine is this tiny little strip of muscle here, and that is actually their tensor fasciae antibrachii. So quite a little bit smaller than what it was in the horse. We can see the long head of this triceps just deep to that, and our medial head of the triceps budding right up to our coracobrachialis muscle. The other muscle that is not present in the horse is this almost tendon looking muscle, but we actually do see some muscle fibers down here distally. This muscle is the pronator teres muscle. So we have that tiny little pronator teres right there. Then we move to the flexor carpi radialis. We have the flexor carpi ulnaris. And then if we reflect both of those, now we see two very large muscle bellies just deep to our flexor carpi ulnaris. Both of those are two different muscle bellies of the same muscle. So this is actually the superficial digital flexor muscle in the bovine. And if you look further distally, you can actually see that eventually the tendons of both of those muscles come together down here distally. So those are both superficial digital flexor muscles. And as in the horse, that is surrounded by the humeral head of the deep digital flexor muscle. And if we look deep under there, now we can see our tiny little radial head right here attaching right onto the bone of the radius.